here uh, with Israeli News Live. Today is August the 25th, 2024, and I have with me very special guest, Jennifer Collins. Uh, Jennifer was a former radio host for Artist First Radio Network. Uh, she's done a, a number of other types of uh, radio hosting type of events as well. Very brilliant lady, and if you ever, ever get the chance to talk to her privately, Believe me, you will definitely have some very insightful conversations. I can promise you that. Nothing will be boring. Nothing. Uh, so I've had the privilege of meeting her and her husband, and uh, they're just uh, a very precious couple there. And we're going to talk today, and, and she had reminded me when I had friend John just recently about, because we had talked to quite a while back, I believe, uh, Jennifer, about the experiences that you had had. And I wanted to have you on quite a while back, but you know, everything in its time. And I think that this is probably the best time uh, of any that where we're at right now. And uh, so I'm, I am just so excited to be able to introduce you to everyone. So please share a little bit about yourself with people that are listening right now. Hi, Stephen, and thank you for having me on. This is exciting. We do. We I really enjoy my conversations with you off air, and you know this is our first time on air. But you know I'm just going to tell everybody you need to buckle up, get your popcorn out, get your coffee out, because this is going to be a wild ride. But uh, my name is Jennifer Collins, and um, you know, like he said, I, I've been into journalism, and I was a, a, a DJ. I, I was a radio personality in Tacoma, Seattle area. For a few years, I had an, uh, a talk show, Mornings Untitled, and it got high ratings. And then Artist First Radio Network for years, I interviewed some very famous people, both authors and also in um, on TV personalities and stuff like that, like um, Bill Burns from UFO Hunters and James Gilliland from Assetti Ranch, and the list goes on and on and on. And so... Um, the reason I kind of got into this is because of things that had happened to me throughout my lifetime, Stephen. Um, things that I couldn't explain, but I kept exploring and exploring. And I'm starting to piece some of the puzzles together, but I'm still learning. Um, but uh, yeah, so I uh, I think I told you, well, where do you want to start, Stephen? Tell me where yeah. do you want I'll tell you what, what we'll do is we're going to, we'll, we'll step into it a little bit at a time here. Sure. Uh, just to kind of maybe, uh, in before we go into the things that you've actually personally experienced yourself, uh, one thing I, I would like to ask, out of all the different people you've ever interviewed before, who would be, we'll say, your, your whether it be the most inspiring, the most intriguing, whatever the may, may you might would call that there, what would you think would be that individual and why? Oh, wow. And there were so many, but I, I've got, I've got two um, that really um, affected me. And uh, one of them was Bill Burns, because he would tell me stuff that he did not say on his 10 year show uh, about alien uh, hunters when they were to investigate. And I really like his investigative mind because they tried to debunk and all this, but I, he just opened my eyes to so many things and helped me to put together some things. My second yeah. guest was Damien Brinkley. Have you ever heard of him? I have not heard of Damien Brinkley. She, okay, so they did a primetime movie. I think it was, it was in the late 70s or 80s called Saved by the Light. And he was a gentleman who had three near-death experiences and blew me away. Anybody can go on Artist First Radio Network, look up Jennifer Collins. I'm in the archives. I don't do it live anymore. But they can look up his interviews. And when I when I asked and requested to interview him, he talked to me on the phone. He goes, I'll tell you what. He goes, we put hundreds of names in the pile because we get so many requests. And my wife's the one that intuitively prays about it and then picks. And I get a call a few days later and he goes, she picked you. So I felt really privileged about that. And he was also my mom's favorite person to listen to. Near-death experiences that really clear up a lot of scary stuff for the afterlife for people. And that's a whole other topic. I don't want to go into it right now because we're going to stick on topic what we're doing now. But um, he had a heart of gold and he sits at the side of over 2,000 veterans who have were dying. And his stories are incredible. 
his uh, heartfelt um, words are touching. And he was another one for sure. So would it be, let's say with Mr. Burns, is there something that you might be able to share that he said that, that he never even spoke about during the 10 years that he was on air? Um, that you could say that you feel okay about sharing that at this point? He saw actual photographs, real photographs from Dulce, New Mexico on their experimental um, cloning and breeding. Wow. And he saw photographs of a cow with a human head. Unbelievable. Now, if I would have heard that from somebody is, other than these, him. Huh? You know, these are some of the things that I have, uh, you know, I've heard about myself uh, through people that I knew. Uh, you know, I know that uh, Greg has mentioned some of those type things as self uh, being that he said he worked down there. He did security, uh, private security down in Dulce. And, uh, and, and he's, you know, he talked about suffering PTSD from just being traumatized from seeing, he said, like, you know, a, a human that would be attached to a horse, uh, things like that. So what was his what was his thoughts of seeing images like this? Oh, he just he just he flipped out. He's like, I can't deny this. This is like, you know, and I really take Bill Burns word for what he says because of his one, his reputation. I met him in person in 2018 at the UFO Congress. I met quite a few other famous people down there and um, got the privilege to talk to them. And for me. It was a no-brainer because he loves to share all of his knowledge and in detail. And he's so good at it. I'm, I'm afraid that if I try to share exactly what he did, I gave you his information, Stephen. Okay. I think your, your guests, I mean, your, your, your subscribers would love to have you interview him. I will reach and, out to him for sure. And, and I'm just saying, I'm not trying to avoid your question. It's just, I would do it in justice compared to how he would come across. Right. So I don't right. really want to speak for him, but I know he will, he'll, he'll just really give you some deep information. That sounds awesome. Is that okay? I mean, I'm, I hope sure, you're not no, that's offended okay. by me not answering that because I just feel in my heart that, uh, you know, only he could say it. He says it the best and it's his experiences. And Brinkley, um, what would you say about Brinkley then as far as during the, the, the things that you've interviewed there? What would you what would you he, say? Okay, so what impressed me about Damien is when he was a kid and a teenager, he was the biggest bully, beating people up. He says, if anybody should have gone to hell, it should have been me, Jen. He says, but I, you know, passed over and he says, everybody. He goes, I didn't go to hell. He says, everybody gets a life review. They take you into this like room and the screen and it shows your life review. And basically, if they wouldn't have sent him back, you go into this outer area where you have to experience every bit of, if you didn't repent down here, if you didn't get it right down here, if you didn't make your amends or feel bad for what you did down here, you will up there because you're going to go through physical feelings of everything that you have ever done to anybody wow. because you didn't deal with it down here. And upon that completion, if your spirit is like, you know, cleansed of all of that and really whatever, then, then you can move on. But they sent him back and said, get it right before you come back for your final. Wow. <laughs> Get it right. That is fascinating. Get it right before you get it right. Out. You know, and forgiveness and helping people and dealing with people is not about letting somebody off the hook who has hurt you. Maybe they maybe they were sexually abused or whatever. Forgiving that person is not to let them off the hook. They're not going to get off the hook. They're going to no. deal with it here or there one way or the other. But it's for you not to hold on to that because you're going to have to deal with that in the afterlife. You take all this with you. Hmm. That is so amazing. All right, let's we'll move on then from there. Now I know that one of the fascinating things too, Jennifer, about you is 
One, you have a grandmother that was one of the first, not the first, but one of the very first women in the FBI. Uh, also, you had a, I believe it was your aunt that actually worked under Rumsfeld. Uh, so you Tom Ridgefield, Tom, Rid Tom Ridgefield. Sorry, Stephen. Tom Ridgefield. Ridgefield. Sorry, sorry. In so, Homeland Security. Yes, with, with Homeland Security there. So you've got some amazing connections through your family. Uh, don't want to necessarily go into those areas there uh, to, to pry around there, but maybe you could speak a little bit about your grandmother and, and, and what she actually, you know, maybe if she ever shared with you what it was like uh, to be in that arena uh, the, the, that many years ago and, uh, and being one of the first females uh, in, in that particular department. Yes. Oh, yes. I remember my grandmother very well. She lived upstate New York and we lived there for a while and I would see her every day. She was a very quiet, private person. She really wouldn't share. But I will tell you, whatever happened to her in the FBI, she would tell us that the Russians are um, watch, it's surveilling her. And we thought, oh, she's just cuckoo. I mean, I've, I've had a talk with my brother since then, my oldest brother. And, and we're like, well, we did think she was cuckoo. But you know what? There was something that might have happened to her that caused that to happen. But she would take off. And we would ask Grandpa. We'd say, Papa, uh, where'd, where'd Vera go? Where'd she go? And they said, oh, she'll be gone for several days. She'll come back when she's ready. And she'd just disappear. Go somewhere. And it would be a while before she would come back. And she wouldn't say a word about it. So that's all the information that I have on was she that. Still, was she still working at the time, though, when she would go out like that? or I, just You know. I, again, she was such a private person. Like she made the best homemade food when we'd come over for dinner and we'd all laugh and have fun and all of that. But I was too young. I, you know, I was like 13, 14. So it was in the seventies. I was too young to pick her brain and to I question anything. Yep. It's so fascinating to, to know. That's, that. But her husband never was worried when she left. He knew she'd come back. There you I'm go. I'm like, Okay. <laughs> You know, when I worked with people years ago in, uh, in the CIA and stuff, uh, I was the youngest person there. And, you know, I, I was just, uh, I don't want to say the floor sweeper, but, you know, I, I was there to learn is what it was. And then, of course, as I learned, I would be sent out on different projects. But there were several women that worked there during the times that I was there. One of them, of course, was twice my age. Um, and she would do a lot of things that I would just think, really, boy, you know, the, we're going to get in all kinds of trouble if we get caught. And I remember my own boss telling me, he says, you don't have to worry. He said, every judge knows who she is. And he said, and there's not anybody that would dare try to prosecute her regardless so you don't have to worry about that. And then there was another lady I remember. And of course, the one girl I'm talking about, she, she wasn't no pretty James Bond-like type figure. You know, she looked like the type of girl that could take you down, beat you up in the back alley, you wish you never met her type thing. And then they had others that were just very, very pretty, very attractive and everything, you know. And uh, I, didn't, I have no idea what they did. Everything was so right. secret. Even though you're in that same agency with these people, they're very secretive about what they did, where they yes. went, and, yes. and only got left in another room while a meeting would go on with them. So, yeah, so I, I kind of well, get what you're talking about. And I, I would like to add, Stephen, I will tell you one thing about my aunt. <clears throat> one thing that she told me, and I think I can divulge just this, is she used to have to go to Area 51 and NORAD, and she lived near Washington, D.C., actually in Annapolis. You know, and every night at the end of the night, because she was a high up manager and her and Tom Ridge would go in, put in their secret documents and both have to put their fingerprint to open the thing and then close it. And she, like I said, Area 51, NORAD, all this stuff. And after she retired, I just asked her, I said, OK, OK, OK. I said, are aliens real? She goes, OK, I'm going to tell you this much. Everybody's looking for them, like in Area 51. She goes, they're not there. They moved them. That's all she told me. So, and my aunt was never one to be emotional. I mean, she was such an even keeled, a logical person, whiz at math, you know, genius level. She, oh, by the way, Stephen, I'll tell you this about my aunt. Her and one other guy were the first ones 
you all that have GPS in your cars have her to thank for. She's the first one, first lady. She's got a certificate where they went and did all the mapping for GPS to start with. And then they turned it over to another company to finish it out for the rest of the country. So that is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Well, you know, I heard that Area 51 was moved to Wyoming, uh, the secret base there, and that is something they've kept under wrap uh, all this time. And as far as I know, no one has ever really brought that out before. Uh, all right, let's go on, though, to, to things about you personally. And, uh, and can you share with us, Jennifer, what you've gone through in life? If you can... Keep, Kind of give us maybe an overview, and then maybe we can look and, and go into some specific individual situations that you've dealt with in life, uh, and 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 what your thoughts are on this. Okay, and Stephen, I don't think I ever told you this, but I'm so used to interviewing other people. Sometimes, and and I hope I don't come across this way. I get a little tongue tied or edgy you know, when I have to answer questions, because I'm, I just love interviewing people, right? I don't really like talking about now, myself, but I know need people to, need to hear you things. You need to kind of lead this a little bit, because you know the better way to go. I am perfectly okay with that. Well, yeah, and you know, I, oh boy. Okay, so, um, and I have to tell you too, I'm kind of a targeted individual, and when I say that, I'm not talking about gang stalking, targeting, or things along that line. I just know that there is a spiritual war out there. Yes. I've been targeted shortly after birth, a uh, few years into, you know, when I, when I grew up and I didn't realize until I was in my teens, kind of why I was targeted. And it's definitely was a spiritual component. I had two sides pulling at me. Okay. I had a, you know, the, the, yeah, two sides, malevolent and benevolent. Okay. Pulling at me and offers from both sides. I mean, that kind of even, so I'll, I'll start with when I was young, I, I saw shadow people. I saw demons, um, things like that. It was a nightly occurrence. Unfortunately, um, I was, uh, raised where my mom was very much into the Bible. My dad was not, he was into occult things. He had friends that were witches and all of that type of stuff. So there was a duel of peace sometime and then spirits that were around. So when I got to be about 14, I'm just going to start with there. Um, okay. I, I told you, my dad was best friends with Ron L. Hubbard from Scientology uh, for a few years. And they were, they were like, oh my God, they would go have coffee, tea, take notes, do things, meet for hours. My mom and I would drop him off at the Scientology church, his first church that was in Washington, D.C. And I didn't know much about it back then. It wasn't like this big, huge, you know, with Tom Cruise and every, everybody else in there, right? So one day my dad comes home and he goes, you know, I there's somebody that wants to meet you. You need to get dressed and let's go. And it was on a Saturday. And I went down to this little convention thing and there were some booths. And lo and behold, there was Ron L. Hubbard. And this was in 70, I don't know how old I was when I was 14. It's 74, somewhere around there. That I just told my age. I'll be 62 the end of this year if that gives you anything. So <laughs> anyways, we got there and my dad introduced me to him and then he stepped away and he began to talk to me in all of these deep esoteric things that, you know, I was familiar with, with my dad, but not used to hearing from anybody else. And then, and then he told me, he says, okay, I, he goes, I need to tell you right now. He goes, your dad and I have had meetings. And I'm not going to live forever. And your dad agreed to do a contract with me so that I could train you because I need somebody who's here when I'm gone to head up what I'm doing. And I'm 14. And in my mind, I'm thinking, this guy is creepy. Okay. And, but I didn't want to say anything. I just smiled and nodded my head. And I'm, he's like, yes, I need to train you. I need to teach you. And then he took out two Polaroid pictures. You cannot, you know, nowadays you can doctor pictures, right, Stephen? You can, like, change them. You right, can... right, right. Back then, Polaroid was Polaroid in 74. You can't really doctor. He says, I have, I have ghostly spirits, women, naked women who come and have sex with me, and they hover over my bed, and it's 
excuse me if I said the wrong word there for okay. YouTube, but okay. But anyway, so I, if I wouldn't have seen them with my own hands, these beautiful women over, and I wouldn't have believed it, but it was still creeping me out even more. So I left and halfway home, because we lived in Maryland and we went out to Fredericksburg, which is where he was at that time. Um, I kind of tapped my mom, my dad on the shoulder. I said, don't ever take me to that man again. And I probably had my first biggest panic attack that I ever had in my life. Wow. And after that, I had spirits coming in my room and trying to do sexual things. I had all sorts of things coming in. And when, when my dad took me home, because my mom was a, a silversmith for jewelry. She made sterling silver, turquoise, all this beautiful jewelry, handmade everything. And when my dad told my mom, she turned him down. He's going to curse us. And my mom freaked out and thought that the jewelry, she said, all this stuff. They were, my parents were really like freaked out. And, uh, you know, I had, that was my beginning of a whole lot of weird events that happened throughout my life, including the UFO stuff. Can, let me ask you this, Jennifer, out of curiosity. Was Scientology, was that a, more or less a religion that was, whether it be on the dark side with uh, Washington or, or, or was this uh, just something that was more acceptable amongst people there? I'm just kind of wondering why the base was actually there in Washington in the first place. Well, I think he, li he lived in Fredericksburg, I think, if I, I, I don't know. I mean, I didn't really research his life for many, many, many years until all of a sudden I saw Scientology was getting real big and how much they worshiped him and loved him. And he was working, I think, with Alan Parson. He went down to NASA, did some work with NASA. And him and another guy went to California trying to open up portals. It's been rumors that he also helped with the, uh, not Stonehenge, what's the, you know, the one that just blew up. The, oh, forgive me. It's been um, a while since I've been on radio. so And I don't have all my notes. <laughs> I don't have any notes. Okay, I'm just okay. talking. I'm just talking, so I don't oh, have any notes. Oh, you're talking about the one in the Georgia. Uh, yes, Georgia Guidestones. Georgia yeah, Guidestones. Georgia Thank Guidestones. you, Stephen. I was okay. actually there a week before that happened, and uh, my wife, myself, uh, Tim Ray with UI Media, and one other friend of, or a couple of other friends of his and stuff, and we just decided to circle the thing and pray over it that it would all come crumbling down. Now, and it did. Ironic, was that and then it, and it did later ask and you shall receive oh my goodness that's crazy yeah so again i'm a kid you know i'm in a teenager but i didn't know enough about how far it was going to go i think he'd written his book dianetics i don't know what my dad was doing my dad had binders and binders of stuff where they were doing things and he actually oh he did tell me this he goes you know what he goes i was going to have your dad do this but he doesn't have the mind for it but you do and i'm like you don't know me what do you mean I have the mind for this to take over what to do what I mean it was new to me and I thought this is just creepy and maybe he was a pedophile I don't know like I hear you you know it is creepy right definitely creepy and some people will say that he was a bit of a genius in some areas but you know to me everything that he talked to me we talked for like two or three hours and I used to see him, but I didn't really talk with him personally until that day, right. um, you know, because my dad would spend time with him. But, um, you know, and then as I got older, Stephen, OK, this is I don't know if this is my paranoid side. You know, we all have a little bit of that, <laughs> just a little, you know, or or where we're just kind of like, what? Yeah. So I found I didn't even know about the Illuminati. And then later on, I found out the Illuminati and there's 13 tribes or families. And one of them's the Collins. So my dad's a Collins. I'm a Collins. I'm like, okay, is this the bloodline thing? Why these things are coming after us, you know, because of a bloodline? I don't know. <laughs> that, that can get scary after a while, right? Uh, for sure. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. So, so anyway, after, after all this happened, what are some of the other things that you've experienced uh, since then as well? Because I know you've had quite a few different types of experiences in life throughout your life. Yes. So uh, what you would call alien encounters, and I'm, I'm not going to go too deep on all my, all my theories on this, but um, I've had paralysis. I've had um, abduction. Um, 
And they actually, okay, who you were talking to Fringe or something like that, where this lady yes. didn't want to have sex with the reptilian, but then she, he he kind of visualized, made her think it was her husband? Yes. Okay. When I heard that, I'm like, oh, that's what happened. So they took me into the craft. The light was so bright, I literally could not make out anything behind <coughs> them. When they came up to me, it was almost like I was in the dentist office, Stephen. It was like this Asian man. You know how they have a little bit of slanted eyes, but big yeah. and slanted. And he was going into my mouth and doing dental work. And next thing I know, I I thought about it several times and I would feel this little indentation, a little cross, mark, like a mark up on my gums that I'd never had, you know? And so that was one experience. And, um, and then other ones were, um, they gave me paralysis. Their craft was hovering outside of my window, slightly out in the country. And um, I actually talked, when I went to UFO Congress, um, there was a guy from the intelligence agency, but he, he didn't let anybody know. But my friend who is steeped into the UFO Congress, goes every year, has written books. It, God bless his soul. He just passed away at 52, which is so sad. And he was an editor and a writer and all this stuff. He told me the guy was Intel. And I, I looked at him one day. I go, okay, you look like Intel. You act like Intel. You must be Intel. And he goes, okay. And he sipped his beer and he winked at me. But anyways, he he asked me a whole bunch of questions. He drilled me. And when I answered him what I thought the craft sounded like and that the um, beings that came out of that craft spoke a language I've never heard on earth ever and the type of sound of their voice was not earthly and i told him a few other things and later on he looked at my friend and he goes she's the real deal stick with her and i'm like okay i don't care whether you believe me or not i know what i what happened for me anyways i know that that happened to me whether people believe me or not um can do you have any way of even remotely to be able to kind of give an idea of what that sound would sound like, would it be like a computer type of sounding or, or kind of, kind of like a mechanical, um, like if you were talking on a walkie talkie in a foreign language and you were okay. communicating with somebody next to you in a walkie talkie, that's how it sounded. And their engine, I told them, I said, look, I am not a, I'm not a physicist, I'm not any scientist or anything. I said, but it sounded like a whooshing noise of water turbine. Hmm. That's what I said. That particular one did. Now, my latest one that I just saw, Stephen, like Brian, you'll attest to this. He's ne he's over here by ne near me. Was when we were in this building and I went outside to do something and I looked up, Stephen, 100 feet up. The lowest one I've ever seen on a UFO as far as like being awake and not in paralysis. Right. It wasn't a cigar shape, but it was a small cylindrical black with some silver made no noise at all. There was no propellant, you know, no um, engine smoke, no, no, nothing, no fire, no nothing. And it glided and it went really slow until all of a sudden it just went and took off. Hundred feet above me, like I could, I could have probably almost thrown a rock at it. So I don't know. Wow. So I know they're watching me. And then Stephen, I got to tell you this: I never told you this one before, but when I went outside um, to sit in this partial enclosure deck, so there was behind me a wall, side of me a wall, and I went and sat, and I felt something poke me like a needle right in my butt. Mm -hmm. I jumped up real quick and I was like, what is that? Grabbed it and I got it. And it was a sliver of a, a crystal glass looking thing. And I can, I can send you a sketch of what it looked like, but it wasn't very big. And I'm looking at it. There was no wind that day. And I'm, I'm, you know, in this partial enclosure. And after I looked at it for like 10 or 15 seconds, it flew straight up and then gone. So, Okay. I don't want to get paranoid here. I don't know what it did to me, what it injected me with. If I'm not even sure if I have any implants, I'm not even sure if the, that's real or what they did to me, but there was something. And that was definitely 
not worldly what happened that day. And now that, now let me, if I got this right, did I understand this right? This is like the size of a, a bug almost? Yes, like the size of a really, really small, um, uh, um, let me see if I can find, see the tip uh, of this pen? pen? Right, right, okay. Like right about that size, but I didn't expect it to fly away. I just thought, oh, I saw it on a little piece of glass or little slivery thing, crystal looking right. glass. Right. It was clear. There was no eyes. There was no legs. There was no nothing. And then it flew away. And I'm like, I don't know. I, to this day, I really don't know what they did to me. Honestly. Oh. That is crazy, right? And you know, and I've there, there's, you know, I have heard of things uh, as far as because I've asked about different things. I've heard about, you know, even uh, alien entities as small as like uh, like a bug as it is, but that would even be smaller, or perhaps maybe it is a um, a, a pen sized drone of some sort. That's what I thought when it flew, when it went like this and then shot off in this direction, like at an angle, not, and there, like I said, there was no wind. There was no way for me to debunk it. I tried to debunk it. I was like, okay. Well, you know, think no about wind. this here. When people think about something that small, they think, well, how could that, how could it even be a technology that small, right? I remember my stepdad telling me, and he worked at Area 51 itself. He said, years ago, he said uh, that uh, we sent to the Chinese, I think it, I may have this backwards, either we sent it to the Chinese or the Chinese sent it to us. I think it was we sent to the Chinese uh, a pen that was sm so small, the needle, the, the head of the needle was so small that you could not see it with the naked eye. You had to have a microscope to be able to see the head of the pen. He said, we sent it to the Chinese to show off our technology. He said, they sent it back. And on the end of the, uh, the head of the pen, they had written a message that said in English, top this. Oh, geez. He said, so figure that one out, right? He said, so we could make a pen so small that you couldn't see it with the naked eye, but the Chinese could literally write a message on the tip of that, uh, that small uh, tip like that. And I'm like... This is just getting too crazy, right? You know, so, but, but granted, now here's something I wanted to ask you about. Uh, we talked, we were talking a little bit about technology uh, before coming on the air. And I was just sharing with you how that, uh, you know, me and my wife, we were discussing back and forth a few days ago, uh, a couple of different people in the ufology, in ufology uh, uh, field there, Stephen Greer and Linda Moulton Howe. And the next thing I know, just, we're just sitting here talking about it. And I, I turn on Twitter. I go to Twitter to do some, do a little bit of research on a few things there. And first thing that comes up was a picture of Stephen Greer and Linda Moulton Howe in a group photo someplace they were back in the early or uh, mid 1990s. And I'm like, how the heck did that happen? And you shared with me something yep. that made me think because I'd heard it before and I'll elaborate after you share with me what you told me. Very good, Stephen. I'm glad that you went to this topic. That's a great question. This technology started a few years ago and, you know, um, Brian and I and a bunch of other people on YouTube tried it. We're like, we'll pick up our phone and we'll go, I want doggy treats. I want doggy bones. I want doggy toys, things like that. And we don't even have a dog. And within a, so many minutes, it would pop up all these ads, all these videos, all these things about doggy tree. So Google, if you, if you, there's a guy that left Google, he was a whistleblower and he says, Google is actually listening in. And, uh, you know, this is secondhand news, so I can't authenticate it. Okay. Just number one, but you know, Google will do that. And then they pop up stuff to get you to buy, get you to whatever. But I also told you, Stephen, this is going to be mind blowing. This is the buckle up, grab the popcorn and your coffee and hold on. They can read your mind. The, the, the artificial intelligence in some of these areas can read your mind. So I began to experiment because I'm one that likes to try to debunk or try to figure it out. Uh, just thinking something. OK, so here's what I thought. 
in my mind, without saying it out loud, I thought, Popeye spinach, Popeye spinach. And I thought it several times, and all of a sudden, here pops up the picture of Popeye with spinach. You answer that one. I cannot explain it. I'm just telling wow. you that it happens. All right. Well, one of the one time when we were, I was discussing with a friend of mine, uh, and we got into technology of aliens. And he was saying to me that he had a good friend that worked down in Dulce, uh, at the base there, and that when he would uh, go down there, he literally would be working with these entities that were there. He mainly spoke about reptilians that were there doing experiments and things of that nature there. And he said he was always fearful. Now, there again. Is that Greg? Was that Greg? No, it wasn't Greg. As a, as a private individual this year. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And he said uh, they would be able to, dis he said, you know, they would go, they would go out back home. They'd have their little time out. They'd come back. He said, and they have some kind of device they scan you with. And when they scan you, it also scans your brain. They know what you have talked about. They know what you're thinking and what you have said in the past, as well as up to the current moment. And uh, and I'm like, you've got to be kidding. He said, this is why the people that work there are so terrified. Now, I had never, you know, I had no way to verify that. Is it really true or not? So when you said Steven, that to me, that was the first time I heard that. Even Brian just made a good comment over here. He says, our brain has no firewall. Oh, wow. Think about that, right? That's blowing me away. You just said that. It's like a two-way radio. It's like a two-way radio. We're like antennas sending and receiving. He says, we have no firewall. We don't have McFay. We don't have... Mm -mm. And I think everyone has an individual frequency. And, and he says can. everyone has an individual frequency and they can they can tune into it. They just like a keep checking the dials until they tune into whatever. Wow. That's Brian, not me. He gets the credit for that. There you go. There you go. Well, that's very interesting. You know, and it's funny because my my daughter had asked me the other day, she's doing research on, on computers and stuff. And she asked me, what is a firewall? And so I was explaining what a firewall was in a computer. But it, so it's kind of odd that this subject comes up now. Just came up now. Right. And, Brian, and you know what? He's an antenna. I got to tell you, I got to tell you, Stephen, when I met Travis Walton from, um, UFO Congress. He's the really bright red hair, beautiful green eyes. And he um, was on, you know, they made a movie about his life and his abduction. Um, when I talked to him off camera, he said, I said, what is the most extraordinary thing that happened to you after this abduction? He goes, I'm going to tell you. He says, I could read everybody's mind. Wow. He said, he said, when I come up to somebody, I can read their mind and I have to dumb it down because I don't want to read everybody's mind. I don't want to hear all that. Mm. And I thought, how cool. But anyways, Brian just <laughs> made the point of like what Travis was saying, that we can send and receive and they can read our mind. That is amazing. The, the, and the thing is, is if we, there's something, no doubt then, that's cutting that off within us. And because we should be able to think uh, or be able to read and speak to one another telepathically. And I yes. know that the different experiences that I've had with angels, although it sounds like you're having a verbal conversation, I also realize it's not a verbal that I hear with my ears. I'm literally hearing it in my mind. It's just that it's, it feels like you're hearing it with your natural ears. It's that realistic. Can I take it? Can I take it a level higher? Because yes Let's to what it. you just said. Let's do yes it. To, yes to what you just said. So you can hear verbal words that they can do telepathically. That's how we were designed to communicate. Because if we communicate with one another with words, this is the confusion. This is why there's wars. This is why there, nobody's communicating telepathically and understanding the heart. The next level is just a knowing, a download, a knowing. You you meet me or I meet you, Stephen, and I have this knowing. Remember when Jesus said, here's Philip. He's a man without guile, right? Yes. Remember that? Yes. He just had a knowing. There was nothing that needed to be telepathic. He just knew. So if we could 
run into people and just know who they are, what they're about, what they're, we don't have to have a bunch of words. We can just know them. You know, what would be so beautiful about that. That is when then you would realize there was, there's, especially if someone did something that, that offended you, you would know that they did not do that to hurt you. On purpose. No, you would know their yeah. heart, their exactly. intent. And then Everything. there would be almost as if there's no need for forgiveness at that point, because you would just know that they don't, they wouldn't mean that. And they don't mean it that way. Yeah. Uh, that goes back to where Jesus actually makes that statement too. you know, father, forgive them. They don't know. Know what they're doing. I, Stephen, do you know how many times I've actually thought of that verse of scripture in my life? That has saved me because I felt that the Lord said that to me. I forgive you. You don't know what you were doing. Yeah. And believe me, we all have, we all need forgiveness. I. Oh my gosh. Yes. Let me tell you. I'm in the chief driver's seat for that one there. So. Yes. You know. Yep. Me too. Me too, Stephen. Me too. And. Wow. Yeah. Let me cry out there. You know, it's like even, even, even to the point, like with my wife and the things that she has suffered through the loss of her father and stuff, you know, she's such a brilliant woman. And she was able to unravel these things around her father's death far quicker than I was, you know. Oh, Yana, Yana is a yeah, Yana, your wife, Yana, is a yes. firecracker. She, like, yes. She gets downloads, information, words, all of that. Like she just right away. And Brian and I are the same way. He had a little bit of brain injury when he was a kid. He's a little slower in speaking, a little slower in thinking it through and all that. And I'm a lot faster or whatever. But, you know, there's no judgment here. There's no judgment. We balance each other out. Right. You know? Right. There you go. There you go. So. But yeah, that's, that's, I'm, I'm that, you know, I'll get things, but it just takes me a while, you know? And right. You're, you know what? I, I make told it tough her. sometimes. It makes it tough. It's been it's tough on I, her because she is so brilliant, right? It's kind of like, come on, boy, catch up. Okay. So I told Brian, because you both have the, the whole gray beard, you have kind of similar shaped face. I told Brian, I go, you and Steven are a lot alike and me and Yana are a little more alike because you know, I'm a little quicker. I'm a little whatever. And, you know, and I, I don't put them down for it, but it's like, okay. You know, <laughs> Brian, I can fo- I can follow- listen, me and Brian make up and good looks. That's what it is. <laughs> right. Exactly. You're both very handsome. You're both very handsome. Oh. And if you got to take a little more time to say something or do something or whatever, that's totally fine. We're all different. Yes. You know, and well, I, you know, know, that, sometimes I can talk a- too much. That, that is the one thing, I, and I'll say this, this is really applying to what we're even talking about with, with you know, we talked a little bit about, you know, the creation of mankind, and, and I'll just say this here, you know, women literally, and, and, and this is without going into the depth of this, I'll just say this, women are like a type of the Holy Spirit, if I, if that's not too much for people to, to, to no, the Holy Spirit is more female, feminine, more feminine, right? Right, because why one, you know, Eve is taken out of Adam, all right, we'll just set like that there. So, if you know, and uh, when they're one, and think about it, because that was the analogy of the prophecy that, that was made there when a man leaves his father and his mother and cleaves to his wife. They again will be, well, it doesn't say they again, but it says they are or they will be one flesh. And that literally is a prophecy. So in, in, in that regards there, a woman is a type of the Holy Spirit in that regard, because what did Christ come to do? He come to reunite us back with uh, God himself by like as the type of Adam and Eve, even though they were taken apart, they come to be reunited once again together. So in that respect, I think that's why a lot of times you see with women, there is a wisdom uh, with a lot of women that is, as some people say, or, you know, they'll say women, get they have intuition. 
uh, you know. Yes. And, and I think that is that is just like a little type of that out there. Right, but you know what? Us women need the men to bring a little bit of balance that way and a little bit of more of, you know, like, we don't always think about, like, all the little details. We just kind of like, oh, oh, this, this, and this, and this. And the men kind of that I that I'm aware of, they they're like, well, but what about this? What about this? What about this? We we compliment each other, if that makes exactly. sense. Exactly, exactly. So more the, logical, the, more right brain, more left brain. You know, it's kind of a exactly. Stephen, I you know I have enjoyed our conversations, Stephen. This one and the times that we're not even online. I tell you that my spirit gets fed. And I really feel that this was a divine connection that you and I met and Brian and absolutely. you and I and you and Yana. Yes, absolutely. So we will have, we'll have to come back again and maybe we can dig a little deeper. Uh, oh, we got a lot by, more to talk by about. By the way, uh, just to throw this out there, uh, Fringe sent me a message. She said, mm -hmm. uh, Steve, do you mind interviewing? I think it's Ted Rice. If I've got okay. this incorrect, have you heard of Ted Rice before? I don't uh, know. What does he do? What does he do? Let me let me be sure. Let me just let me look okay. at this real quick to make sure and, that I have that right. Um, and, and and while you're looking that up, I just want to tell um, your viewers that we actually have a lot more topics of a lot more deeper stuff, even than what we went through today. We just cut the surface, but we didn't know exactly how it was going to go. We don't, we didn't have like soap notes. I mean, he had a couple questions written down. He wanted to ask me, but we have a lot more that we can talk about. Yes. Um, at some other yeah, time, that's what I if was you guys interested. are interested, let us know if you're interested and, you know, don't forget to hit the thumbs up because this helps Steven to, you know, the like, the share and all that, make a comment or whatever, because it really helps the algorithms and it helps it to get out there. So more and more people can hear this information and it's not about me. It's just, I'm, I'm saying he interviews so many great that. people. It is so yep. true what you're saying there too, Jennifer. And, and listen, is there a way that if, if people wanted to reach out to you, do you have a, a, a way for them to be able to do so? Um, I have a YouTube. I don't do it as consistently as you do, but I'm Jennifer Collins on YouTube and or they can email me if if they have a question or something like that. It's Jenny, J-E-N-N-Y, B, the letter B is in boy, dot or period, agent 007. So Jenny Bond, no, Jenny B, dot agent 007 at gmail.com if you have any have any questions or anything like that. But, you know, I just, I just enjoy our conversation Stephen. that's all likewise, i say likewise so god bless you thank you for coming on today and i'm sure we'll certainly bless so many people and by the way it was ted rice ted rice uh has talked a lot about the mantis and from what oh you, the mantis uh, people yeah he's she said he's getting he's getting uh elderly uh and they're worried about him not being around much longer and oh, wow. I don't know if I'd be willing to bring him on just to get more people aware of what you should. So, yeah, so we're going to bring him on. And actually, Fringe is going to do that interview with us. So I think she, this will be interesting, too, because Fringe is kind of she she was new to coming out in the community. From what I understand, I mean, if I got that wrong, Fringe, forgive me. Uh, but uh, she got bold enough to come out and start sharing and more and more people. Awesome. I think Jennifer are willing to start speaking up uh, and, and sharing those thoughts that they have out there. And, and so, and, and I got one question though, for you, before we close. Okay. Up. Malevolent and non malevolent entities. Do you believe that there are both? Do you think that they're all evil? I mean, I've got different. Oh, no. Opinions. As above, as above, so below. Uh, there's malevolent and benevolent beings on this planet as people, and they're the same in every dimension, uh, whether they're um, spirits, whether they're alien, whether they're creatures, and there's so many factions. I mean, if you can think about how many, how many countries do we have in America, with how many different races do we have in America, right. it's pretty un unlimited to that, and that's a whole other show, but Okay, Stephen, yeah, I we'll just want to thank you for having me come on. Thank you. Huh? Uh, we'll do oh, that next time then for sure then. We'll, we'll go into some of those issues next time.
Oh, we can. And that's as far as my understanding. Anyways, anything that I've said tonight, you guys can, you know, double check with your own spirit and, and your own information, whether you believe or you don't. But Stephen, I, I really want you to get me Greg's information too, because of what he described that he was dealing with. I'd like to pick his brain or write him or something like that, if that's okay. I, I can get y'all connected. I definitely will. I'll, I'll, I'll get you his email and vice versa, let him know that you want to talk, reach out to him. And, and we may end up doing some tag team shows like this because I think it would Yeah, really a bunch of us get on here, right? Yeah, exactly. We could be like the Brady Bunch. We've got up here. There you here. go. There you go. What thank a way. you so that much, Steve. An awesome way. So anyway, thank you guys. Bless and, you. Uh, love bless to everybody to here. Well. To you and Brian, we love you guys. Shalom. And shalom, shalom. Thank you.